Let me ask uh, uh, David, would you lead us in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day that you've given us. We realize that you're in control of all things, and you've preserved our lives to this moment. We're thankful, Father, for the physical blessings that we enjoy from your handiwork in this hour. We're so thankful, Father, for your plans and provisions that allow us to be with you in heaven. We're so grateful for your son's part in sacrificed his life for us and paid the debt for our wrongs. We're grateful now for Phil and for all he has done and the influence on everybody. Be with us in this class. We just apply those things to your word and use it to help others to know about you in heaven. Forgive us our wrongs in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I do appreciate the presence of each one of you this evening and I hope that our time together will be beneficial. I wanted to tell you that this is the last one of the dull lessons. Now, tonight's dull, and then after this, they're going to get really interesting, and I'll explain to you maybe why that is. If there's somebody in here now that looks like me, it's, there's a reason for it. <laughs> last week when we closed, we were talking about the Bible world, the Bible lands, and we talked about the different countries that are involved in that. And now we're coming a little more specifically to the land of Israel because that's, the, that's kind of the center of everything. That's where God told Abraham to go. And uh, that is, it will be called Israel. We'll talk about that. But uh, those are the uh, things that we, we, we're considering now is the land. Uh, I'll sh hopefully get to the last slide. And uh, next week, not next week, but it'll be a week from uh, Sunday, right? Am I right? A week from Sunday before we meet again. And when we meet again, we will begin some of the specific topics that I think you will find very interesting. And uh, so I'll tell you a little more about the first one of those when we get a little further along in our, in our study. So let's go now to the Bible world and to uh, the New Testament world, just for a moment or two, to explain where it is specifically. We talked about the Old Testament world, or the whole Bible world, which would go from Iran and then through Iraq, coming from east to west, and then you would go through uh, Jordan, uh, through Iraq, then through uh, Syria, 
Turkey. I mean, you got to you know go down through all of them, and then finally through Israel and on down to Egypt, and then of course Turkey is part of that as well, and also Greece and and Italy. So it's a very large world, uh, one that is very important also in so many ways in the world. So the Mediterranean world is the world primarily of the New Testament. And I have a second map here. This is one of the NASA maps. I use a lot of those because they're, they show us a lot and they show us the terrain. And uh, if you think about this, maybe you haven't thought about it. Uh, I've traveled a lot in Turkey, as I mentioned. And I always tell people, if you go to Israel, you've got the main part of where you need to study about because you're studying everything from Genesis chapter 12 all the way through to Acts chapter about 15. And then after that, there's not much more uh, in that part because when you come to that point, you come actually to Acts chapter 10 with the conversion of Cornelius, you're beginning to make the move away. And then after that, you're going to move up to Antioch, which is in Syria for a long, long time. It's been in Turkey most of, for almost a century now. Uh, they just voted to be that way. And so when you c come there, and that would be, let me make sure I've got the right pointer here. It's not working. Let me try the correct thing. There we are. You see, right up in this part is where it's located, right along here somewhere. And uh, then you come out to these islands, you begin to pick up things like Cyprus. Paul goes over here into this area and up into what we know as Turkey today. Then, little by little, he makes his way on over to Greece. Then after that, eventually to Rome as a prisoner of Rome. And so that would be the Mediterranean world. A lot of these islands are involved. The island of Cyprus, which is the one with the pointer there. And then you find uh, uh, Crete and others uh, out further. And we'll move on to the next one. And you see we go as far now as, as Crete. And then after that, you would pick up on uh, Italy, I mean first Greece, and then after that Italy for all of those places. So it's a big world uh, and one that is very important, of course, in our study of Scripture. So what I started to say was this, that people, let me move some things here because we need you worse than we need this. This is just my billfold, so I was going to... I'm just joking, but it's <laughs> he didn't he didn't uh, didn't get it anyway. <laughs> so as we as we move into these areas, you see, and study, we go to Acts chapter 12, well, 11 really, when you read about the movement in Antioch, and from that point on, you're basically outside of Palestine. So everything from Genesis until Genesis about 12, until you come to Acts chapter 11, everything is going to be centered in Palestine, in Israel. In, we're going to talk about the words in just a moment or two. And then after that, we will move on to uh, other areas. And that's important to know. Okay, so we have to go to those places. The Bible world. In Hebrew, this is referred to as ha-eretz. Uh, in uh, Hebrew, anything that begins with ha, H-A, is the, and eretz is land, so the land. It is the land. And so there is a newspaper in Israel today called ha-eretz. It is the land. And that's significant to realize the name of it in Hebrew. It has also been called in Israel Canaan, the land of Canaan. And uh, that is one we pick up as we read the Old Testament. It's used repeatedly in the 
land in the country. And uh, sometimes also it is referred to as Israel. God mentions one time in Zechariah 2 and verse 12 that it is the holy land. It is a holy land. And the reason for that, you understand that the word holy means something that's dedicated or consecrated to God. And so in that sense, because he chose that land, it is the holy land. Uh, It's not just a title of the thing. And I mentioned to you last week that I referred always in my tours to the Bible lands rather than the holy land or the holy land. And Jordan now has picked up, they have a lot of biblical sites in Jordan, and uh, they have picked up on the title, The Other Holy Land. And, uh, of course, there's so many places there that are noted for characters that we recognize in the Scripture. Uh, Moving a little bit further, we have the Roman province of Syria. That's what it is by New Testament times. There's an interesting history about the change of these things, but it's referred to sometimes as Syria because it was the Roman province of Syria. Now we limit that to the area where Damascus is the capital. And it is also later in the second century AD, it comes to be known as Palestine. And that really comes from the idea of Philistine land. It is the land where the Philistines had lived and been prominent for a long period of time. Okay, so that's in the second century AD, not in New Testament times. But there's a problem when you start talking about it. And so I find myself, when I'm talking about it, using all of these terms. You can call it Canaan, you can call it Israel, you can call it Palestine. And in my travel blog, and incidentally, how many of you follow my travel blog? Ah, see, you don't know about it. Can you spell my name? (laughs) That's what's important. I'm going to spell it for you, right? It's Farrell. You ever heard of Will Farrell? You shouldn't have any problem. Okay, my name is William Farrell. That's true. So, but, but this, this blog is Farrell, F-E-R-R-E-L-L. Two R's, two E's, two L's. One F. Yeah. So, you remember that. So, Farrell Jenkins. Got Jenkins? Dot. You know how to put a dot? <laughs> blog. B-L-O-G. Not com. Blog. So FarrellJenkins.blog, you will find there around 1,200 or 1,300 articles. I started it in 2013 simply to be something that would keep folks that had people with me on the tour apprised of what we were doing because a lot of people through the years have been afraid to go anywhere in that part of the world. And uh, we wanted them to know that we were having a lot of fun as well as learning and everything was safe. So, feraljenkins.blog. If you would sign up for the blog, I don't ever look to see. No, I've looked two or three times in those years. But I usually don't look to see who is on the list. But I would know that a person had decided to be on the blog. There are... 3,200 something people who get it every time I write one. And I haven't been able to write as many in the last few years, but I've begun again to write and to put photos and almost every one of them has one photo and some of them will have more than that. Some of them will have two or three uh, and so on. So I think you'd find some of the recent ones interesting and others that we are going to be talking about from time to time. So we've got all these different words. Now, the modern state of Israel comes along in 1948. And when we think about that, they call it Israel. That's the name of a state. I always distinguish it this way. There is a difference between the biblical nation of Israel and the modern state of Israel. So keep those two things separate in your mind. Though many of the 
gods, especially, especially Israeli gods, Jewish gods, would want you to think that it's the same and that it's a continuation of the Bible. But it is not a continuation of the same. And uh, that's another subject that I would love to talk to you about. Okay, now let's notice the Levant. That is another word that describes the countries that are along the area here. Starting here where Turkey makes the turn and it doesn't come very far, but Syria is here. That's the Euphrates River right up there. And then as we come on down like this through Lebanon and then Israel and on down toward Egypt, that is the Levant. So it's those Mediterranean countries that are on the east side of the Mediterranean Sea. And it's a term that's used, Levant and also Levantine. Some people will use that term regarding certain things as well. So I wanted you to look at, uh, see where I'm going. I wanted you to look now at this map, which is really about the roads. But I, I wanted to show you one road in particular. And I'll do my best to hold a steady hand. I want you to see the road that is the international road of travel. I'll show you two or three. But uh, one in particular, it, I'm trying to see. Suppose a king was over in Iraq, in Babylon or Assyria, right? And he decides that he will come over and he will capture all the little countries. He'll capture Israel. This is after the kingdom divided. He'll capture Israel, which now is a country in the north part of the, of the land. He will capture Judah, and then he'll go on down to, Babel, to Egypt, and he will go as far south as Aswan. That's almost to the south of Egypt, almost to the end of the country. And so he's going to go that way. How is he going to do that? Well, we looked at the Fertile Crescent, remember? We looked at the Fertile Crescent that is that arch of the sown land, as compared to what you have otherwise, which is the desert, all right? So how are they going to get here? Well, they're going to come from over, over here where we are. Let me go back. There we go. And we're going to say they were over here. So now they come up here. All right, let's go up to Damascus. So now they've come as far as Damascus. They come on down like this. And they can come here to the Sea of Galilee, right here. So they're going to take this road, or this is the desert road over here, which is the King's Highway. See, this is going on down like so. King's Highway right here. And they're going all the way like this. And so that's the way they traveled. They had real roads that did this. Okay? Now look what else we have, where we're going. And so if they want to go to Egypt, though, how are they going to go? I think I've got the wrong one again. Which one is it? There we go. All right, so if we come now to the Sea of Galilee, you see how this road right here I'm pointing to? We can go there, come to Hazor, we can go here down to Kinneret. That's the Kinneret Sea, Sea of Kinneret. That's what the Israelis call it, the Jews call it. Come on down like this. Or you could go like this, like right here, and go through Megiddo. You can't get there with go, except going through what? What do, you, what do you say for 20 years? You can't get there without going through Atlanta. Atlanta. Well, you can't get there without going through Megiddo either. So that's really important to realize how significant this place is. Uh, there were nearly a dozen significant battles that took place at Megiddo. Why is that? Because that's where they had to meet the enemy, right there. 
And so it's real significant. That's where Saul was killed in that region and so on. And so now as we look further, we are at Megiddo. I keep punching the wrong one of these. This is the right one. All right. So we keep doing this. This is high fashion. I mean, this is really up to date. <laughs> and I have never had one of these to play with before. So we come down like this, the ghetto. Now we're going over to the coast. You see, we're falling down to Joppa. And then we can continue along the coast or inland, more likely. We're going inland like this. And then we're on the coast of Philistia, and we're going down to Gaza and all the way to Egypt. So that's the international road. The two international roads that I've mentioned to you are what? The King's Highway, it's in the east, and the other one is the one here that is the, the, the coastal route, the coastal route. Now, the coast, you notice something else about this that's helpful. And that is, here we go. And that is that, you see how this stays inland here? You're not on the coast. And there was nothing on the coast for a long, long time. Now today, when the Israelis came back, people, Jews came back rather, and wanted to form the country, what did they build? What's the, what, what do you think of, besides Jerusalem, what do you think of as the main town in Israel? Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. They built Tel Aviv. See, we call it, what do we call a, a mound of an ancient city? A tell. a tell. And this means it's a tell that's sprung up. It's a tell that's new. It's a tell. It's not a tell at all. See, but that's the name they gave to it. Something old, something new, put together. And so they call it Tel Aviv. And uh, they, there is the city that is, uh, it's not even on this map, of course, because it's a biblical thing. And uh, before that, until you come down to Joppa, you won't find much of anybody that's traveling the coast. They're not going the coast because it was not compatible with travel. It's grown up, it's, uh, it was sand, you know, things like that. And then they would come inland. Also, while we're here, notice another little point with regard to uh, where we were, and that is we were here at uh, Gaza, right there, and then right along here. And you see this little stream here? That little stream is called, you all know that when you studied Bible geography, what is it? The Wadi El Arish, right. The Wadi El Arish. And the boundary of Israel was from, in biblical Israel, was from the Wadi El Arish all the way up, really, to the, Medi to the uh, Euphrates River. So all of that land was part of the land that God gave to Abraham. Now the Israelis, the Israelites rather, never did live in all of that. They controlled it a time or two, but they didn't live in all of it. So they only lived in a very small portion of the part that God gave to them. Okay, now let's move on from this. There are your international trade routes that are important. And that's rather... Uh, Important that we realize these. Okay, uh, look at this little map. In this case, what we have is those international, not the international trade routes, you know where they are, but watch what we have here. We have this right here, and that is in the area of Jordan, all right, and over here. This is a mountain range in Israel. That mountain range comes all the way from the north here, all the way down, goes all the way to Turkey. This one comes all the way down through Jordan, right there. All right, now over here, 
we have, we're going to look at the mountain ranges, the hills and the valleys just a little bit. And I want you to pick up on the fact that up here we have Mount Lebanon, Mount Lebanon. And then we also have the anti-Lebanon mountains. I showed you a little bit about Lebanon last time. So closest to the coast, that is the Lebanon mountain. All right. Then you come inland and you go through a valley that is called the Bika, 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 B-E-K-A-H, or B-E-K-A sometimes, Bika Valley. And then you go up onto another mountain range, and that is the anti, it means not like us. <laughs> it's not like that. It means that it is against the Lebanon mountains. It's over against those mountains. So you have the Lebanon mountains, the anti-Lebanon mountains, all right? And then what you have when you go over the mountain? Desert. Now you've got a desert all the way to, I don't know where, <laughs> till you get to the Euphrates River way over there. So that's real important to understand that. That's why people didn't travel across there is because all of that is desert and uh, something that you don't want to be caught in. Uh, it could be very bad. Now, look at something else that we'll have here. Now, we're going to have not only these, this mountain range up here that we talked about. Here we go again. And so we have this. We have right down through here. All right, what? Looky here at, this is, uh, where am I? I'm not up, here's the Mount Lebanon. Now, notice that between these two mountain ranges, we have a valley, right? What's happened? I can't hold it. Can't hold it here. All right. You see right here? All right, so between those two mountain ranges, here's Mount Hermon right here. I'm going to come to Mount Hermon in a minute. And then over here is the Lebanon Mountains. In between is the Bekaa Valley. And as we come down like this, we have this deep depression. That depression starts where Turkey curves like this. You know what I'm talking about? You picture that, here's Turkey, and then over here is Syria, Lebanon, Israel. All right, so right there. And so it curves like this. All right, so that is going to be a great wide valley. And it's going to be called the great, what? Anybody know the word? The Great Rift. The Great Rift. And once we get down into what we know today as Israel, it's going to be commonly called the Dead Sea Rift. The Dead Sea Rift. So that's the same thing. All right, so start over at the coast again. We've got what? The Lebanon Mountain Range. And that becomes the mountain range that is going down through Samaria, and Jerusalem and tapers off before Beersheba. So it's real important. Then we have this depression and that's going to be the depression that is the Great Rift. And it goes all the way through the Dead Sea and there's the lowest point on the earth that we have. It's right now it's about 1,320 feet below sea level, used to be 1,290, changes a lot year by year because it's drying up, and there are reasons for that. And so as you go down like this, then you continue on to Elot and Aqaba. Aqaba is in Jordan, Elot is in Israel, but in biblical times it was basically Elot or Elath, Elat that was there. Continue on south and you go all the way into 
Eastern Africa, and that would be Somalia right there. So that's the way this goes. See, it's very, very significant as a feature of the way the Earth is and the way the various countries of the Earth are located as well. Okay, move on from this. This is the way the, I, I started a lot of these things and never did get much more than this one in it, but I wanted you to see a little bit. If you were in that great rift, but you were south of Beth Shan, this would be about, this would be about 30 miles south of the, of the Sea of Galilee. So you know where the Sea of Galilee is, so that's an easy way to say this. And this is in Jordan, where I'm standing, where we're standing, and we're looking across the Jordan River, but you don't notice the Jordan River. You don't notice it, but where is it? I don't have a pointer except this pointer, do I? I'm trying to use that little, oh, something little. Right there, the Jordan River, see that line of greenery, like here, somewhere right along there? See, that is the Jordan River, but you almost never, you can drive 70 miles from the Sea of Galilee down to the Dead Sea, and you almost never see the Jordan River. Why? It's hidden. I call it, and I don't know of anybody else that ever did, so you can credit me with this. <laughs> I call it the Shy River. It's shy. It doesn't want to be seen. And so you have to make your way in among all kinds of things. And I've only seen it at a few places in all of that. And I've, you know, looked for it here and there. There are just a few little places where you can get a glimpse of it uh, as it curves here or there with a little space around it. Now, we're looking from Israel. We're standing in Israel right here on the road. And we're looking across, and that is, we're down in the valley, see? And what are we looking at? What mountain range would that be? Is the is it east facing? Hmm? Is, are we facing east? The we're facing east. It's the anti-Lebanon chain, right. So it's in the anti-Lebanon chain, it's going on down like this, all the way uh, to Petra, you know, through Jordan, Amman, on down to Petra, and then all the way down even to Saudi Arabia, almost to that, that area. So there's a lot of things in here that are very significant, and that's the way the mountain goes up. So that's called the Transjordan, across the Jordan. That's the Transjordan plateau, or a lot of books call it the Transjordan uh, tableland. So it's not exactly a tableland, but it's not a, it is not a peak like this. Now, in the case of the other side of the Jordan, where you have Jerusalem, it's a peak like this. See this? But this one over here is more or less, it's up and down. And so that made it a better way to travel, for people to travel. It was a lot easier to go the King's Highway than perhaps some other way. Okay. Next we go. Yeah. Was the Jordan River always shy? I mean, is, is that... Is that I don't know. I've, I've not been there always. <laughs> was it always, uh, as far as you know, under the ground? I would say that probably so. And the reason I would say that is because there is the expression used in the Bible about it being uh, the jungle of the Jordan. And it was said to be a place where lions were located. Uh, and so I would say, yes, probably so. It was shy. I did see a picture just about a year ago somewhere. I was looking and it showed the Jordan River. It was a picture taken in 1890 or something. And it appeared to be substantially larger than the picture they showed in the same location. They were saying that it had been drained a lot for you know, irrigation and whatever. Yeah. And so it appeared that way in that picture. Yeah. It, well, if you go down to the area where the Israelites crossed, 
And uh, the last major flood in there that was really, really big was, you know, back in the early part of the 1900s, I believe. And uh, what he says is correct. The reason it's drying up, I didn't mean to d deal with that at all, but the reason it's, it's uh, drying up is because everybody wants the water. And uh, the people of Syria wanted it. And uh, that's why there was a war with Syria. And they were going to, if you ever saw The Spy, the movie The Spy, and it has the guy Eli Cohen, who was a spy for Israel. It's a true story. Our, our friend in, our, our man in Damascus is what it was called. The book was called. And uh, he uh, saw people buying up from him because he was posing as a businessman, these big old, you know, pipes. And he got to go and take a look from the Golan Heights down. We've got to get to this water. They wanted the water. And so that's why the Golan Heights are significant today. And uh, then up when you go to towns like Caesarea uh, Philippi, and Dan and like that, those are ones that really were in Syria until uh, beginning in 1967 and following. So that's rather significant. It's a good point. Okay, let's see now. We'll go on to the next one. And uh, this is the Dead Sea area, and it was called... Uh, the way I learned to say it was, it was just spelled a little differently, it is Lake Asphaltus. And why is it called Asphaltus? Because it not only has salt in it, the saltiest body of water in the, in the world, in the, or on the earth, but also because uh, it has asphalt. In other words, you can see uh, maybe like what was called pitch in the Bible. You can see pitch. And sometimes, and I've, been, I've seen pictures of this. I've not actually seen this, but I've seen it in the Israel Museum, also examples of it, that uh, this is a formation that they said, I, ha I had guides who told me, older guides, when I first was going. And they said, yes, I've seen it floating out here. In other words, popping up out of water. And of course, we think in terms of Sodom and Gomorrah being somewhere in that region too, you see. And so maybe something there that was significant. Okay, let's move on a little bit. Let me not get too far away. Here is snow in Lebanon. Now, what you see as the snow is simply what is right here. You see, you got one line and another line right there. A lot over here, and then a good bit here. And so that's the snow. It's these are all clouds, I believe, here. And then there may be snow over here also, but it's probably clouds. And so this is the Jordan Rift, the Great Rift coming down like this. And over here, this is going up to Egypt, like so. Have I got the right thing? Yeah. And then the coast there. So I want to talk about Lebanon just a little bit. Lebanon and not Lebanon, but the Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is in three countries. The highest peak is in Lebanon. And then I don't remember which is which. I think it would be Israel next, the way it's divided. And then the lowest portion is in Syria. So I've been able to see all parts of this. This is from Syria. And if you go south from Damascus and you're going like you were going to Amman, Jordan, and you go, you know, almost to the border with Jordan, you look over there and you can see some snow. This picture was made in May, the month of May. And even then, you will still see that it has some snow on it. And that snow is right there, see, little bits of snow. Don't confuse the clouds. That's, that's something different from that. Now, if we look over here at this one, notice what we have. We have now, there's the Lebanon Mountains, 
the anti-Lebanon mountains. Mount Hermon is in this range. Got it? So these are going to come on down and be our two mountain ranges, and then we've got valleys in between. This is real important when it comes to where the people lived, where they got their water, where they got their food. See, I'm not off the subject because I'm leading you to the subject to see that this is really important to consider because of what we're going to talk about daily life in Bible times and the way people live and the way they, what they, what they were able to grow. What do you have to have to grow stuff? Water. Light and water. You've got plenty of light over there, but not a lot of water. And that's going to be significant that we have to have that water. And so uh, these are clouds here in the foreground, like so. Those are all clouds. But here are the mountains right there. And it comes on down like that. Okay. Let's go. Let's, am I going backwards? I'm going backwards. Here we go, forwards. A year ago in March, I was in Israel. I had never been to Mount Hermon. I had seen Mount Hermon, but never been to the mountain. Uh, with a group, you never have enough time. And then for some reason, on some of the independent tours, I was never able to go. But there's a place called Mount Bental, which is a little north of the Sea of Galilee. And if you go there to that place, peak. It's a significant area, very tall, a lot of mountains, three or four mountains in that region. And they are peaks where used to Syria had their radars and everything. Now Israel has part of them because they took them away. And Mount Bental is one of those where the Israelis fought the Syrians during the war 1967 and following the various wars. There's it, feraljenkins.blog. See that? Some of these have been in the blog, and I've uh, just uh, pulled them out of that rather than redo them. So this is uh, not real people standing there with machine guns. These are, they have a lot of this in Israel. They'll have a lot of these uh, metal formations, you know, and you may have a camel or you may have a donkey or you may have a man with a with a rifle or a machine gun. And the mountain, what's the mountain in the distance there north of us? That's Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon. And what is there about Mount Hermon that's so significant? Well, Mount Hermon can be seen from all these countries. So if we are now in Israel, and we're now on the road, we're like this, we're on the road this way, we're going north and we're going north in Israel all the way to the border of Lebanon. And when we look over there, we can see the mountains. And so that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the mountains. This is from a valley that is in Israel going to the north. It is, it is along the north of the Sea of Galilee, and we're looking over at the mountains. So you see it goes up quite high at this point, take it right here. See, that's the height of it right along there. There's clouds, but right there is the mountain. Okay. See. And boy, was it cold. <laughs> so I wanted to see snow, and I got to see snow starting, but the next day they had a nice cover of snow. So they got it that all during that day and that night. And... Uh, uh, it was my, when I took my hat off, I just did it like that and water just popped right, right off of it. Uh, so that was a good experience. I really liked doing that. Now this mountain is 9,232 feet high. And uh, that's the highest peak in the Bible world. If Mount Ararat is the mountain of the, of the ark, it's still Mount Ararat, whether it is or not, but that may not be where the ark was. But if it is the same, then this is just a few feet taller, but not where we are. We're only up where 
I, I didn't look up. I, I thought about it late this afternoon going back. I, some of the pictures that we made here were I had the GPS on. And so it might be this is just where they go to ski. This is like a little ski village in this area. So I was delighted to see that. It's mentioned several times in the Bible. We'll be talking about some of those. And from the Bika Valley in Lebanon, we can look back over to that snow, and that's the, that's the Lebanon range. See, we're in the valley between them. So now we look over to the Lebanon range. And this is Baalbek, which is a very important town in the area. That's the same picture I showed you before. And uh, now let's take a look at a slice of the land. We want to slice this land so that we can see what's going on here. All right. All right, you see the slice? Let me see if we can get a good view on the slice. You see, where do we start over here? Let's start over here. That's the coastal range. This is the mountain range. Here's Jerusalem. This is the Depression, the Jordan River, and this is Transjordan Plateau. See that? All right, now watch as we go through this as what we're going to be seeing. Now look at the cross section. See, so you have here, you have Joppa, you have Lod. This area right here is referred to as the Shephelah. Just say Shephelah. Put the S and the H together. Shephelah. Hmm? Shephelah. Oh, you're saying it. <laughs> I thought you, <laughs> thought you needed my attention. <laughs> so Shephelah, and then you, that's called lowland in some of our older English Bibles, the lowlands. The Israelis call it by this Hebrew name, Shephelah. Then you come to the Judean hills. This is if you were at Jerusalem. This then brings you to sea level as you go down. The mountain range there for Jerusalem is 24, about 2,400 feet above sea level. When you go east to the Mount of Olives, you're 2,600 feet above sea level. And when you get to the Dead Sea, you are 1,300 feet below sea level. That is quite a ride to do that. And I don't have time to tell you about my first experience with that ride out of Amman, Jordan, going there. And it's quite something, especially in the dark, and you've never been there before. <laughs> so quite interesting. And then you come up over here, and you're about... 3,000 feet above sea level in the Transjordan Plateau. So it's... Okay, lots of interesting things happening there. The coastal plain, this is what you need to know. The coastal plain is right there. That goes about 10 miles. Then you come to the Shephela or the lowlands. That's where the Valley of Elah is located. Then you come up into the central mountain range, the central mountains. Now, why is this important? We're going to talk about daily life in Bible times. What can you grow in mountains? Very limited, right? Okay. And what can you grow along a coastal plain that's mostly sand? Not too much. And then you come over here to the Dead Sea. You can grow nothing. Nothing lives in it. A few things do, but nothing that's worth, you can't eat it. And then you come up into the mountains, you see? So that's where we wanted to be, right here, the Great Rift, and here. And that's the last slide. So we'll talk about that next time. And next time, I'll show you what we're going to talk about. Next time, oh, I was going to tell you about earthquakes. So we'll pick up on earthquakes also and talk about those.
because they still occur. They, that was in the 8th century, but they still occur today also. They'll have one or two a year, maybe three in uh, Israel. And then, was that the second bell already? Yes. All right, and let me show you this one thing here. Oh, I was going to show you, I'm going to talk about the winds. I will talk about that, uh, the different uh, weather uh, and the change of the winds and how wind brings in things, you know, that can affect your life. Thank you so much for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Darrow.